Let me introduce the editor in chief, chief of the Lancet. I have with me Dr. Richard Horton. Uh, appreciate uh, you, Dr. Horton, for waiting with us uh, very patiently. Uh, we were speaking to Dr. Mande. He heads the Indian research wing as far as finding a COVID-19 vaccine is concerned. I don't know whether you heard what he was saying or not, but uh, he had something very exciting to say about these these uh, testing kits. What do you, what do you make of uh, make of this progress? Well, first on the vaccine, um, I, I'm very excited by the prospect that we could have a vaccine before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, we could easily see us going into human trials with candidate vaccines uh, within the next two to three months. And if those early studies work out, then we could have safety and efficacy studies completed by the end of the year. And then if we can get scale up of production, um, at pace, then uh, we really could have something very, very fast. And that would beat the 12 to 18 months projected time that we had been thinking of hitherto. Uh, on testing kits, I think that's a little bit... Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm worried about the testing uh, arena. We don't actually at the moment have a, a, have a, a simple antibody test. Uh, at the moment, we're relying on, as uh, I heard him say, these RT-PCR tests uh, to diagnose whether you have infection. Uh, that's, those are perfectly good tests. The problem is that you do require quite sophisticated laboratory facilities mm. to run those tests, and not every country has those facilities. So I'm a little less optimistic on the uh, testing front. Mm. Fair enough, fair enough. Fair it enough, was important, it to, was hear important this. to hear this. I'm... I'm, I'm uh... I'm happy that you said what you did because, you know, we'll take this back to the government and see what they have to say. Uh, interesting perspective. But where do you stand on this global effort as far as vaccine is concerned? You gave us a brief summary of, uh, of where we stand. But see, individual countries are carrying out their own research uh, to find their own vaccine. Just, just a summary of who stands where, what have you learned since you're the expert? Well, every, you're right. Every uh, country it has got a uh, very aggressive vaccine development program. Uh, the big pharmaceutical companies have uh, made a very impressive effort to redirect resources to vaccine development, and they're working with university laboratories to do so. So I'm absolutely certain that we will have many different candidate vaccines. What I'm worried about is that the creative flourishing of, this, uh, vac of these vaccine candidates is, is going forward in a very uncoordinated way. And so it's quite possible that we will have many candidate vaccines all going into human trials, uh, and it'll be a very confused situation. Uh, I would like to see uh, more global coordination of these vaccine trials uh, so that we can catalogue which are the candidate vaccines, mm. uh, where they're being studied, and what the likelihood of success is. And if we could coordinate that work, well I think that would well be said. a big step forward. Well said. Dr. Orton, well, that's exactly the, the, the focus of the show. As of now, do you feel, and you said it, do you feel that right now these are isolated efforts? Lots of efforts that many countries are taking, but absolutely isolated, disjointed. Do you think coordination could be done and Lancet could play a role because you're a journal that publishes all these efforts? Well, yeah, I think the word you used is exactly right, disjointed. Uh, and I remember that we had this problem in the early days of uh, HIV AIDS, when there were a lot of candidate vaccines, many dozens of candidate vaccines, and it required an initiative called the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative to come together and start coordinating these efforts. We need to have an international COVID vaccine initiative. And the International COVID Vaccine Initiative, in my view, should be coordinated through the World Health Organization uh, to be able to get a proper assessment of the global research. Should it be done by The Lancet? That's very kind of you. Um, but I think that the World Health Organization, as the official global health agency with statutory authority, uh, 190 odd member states, they should be the ones who coordinate this work. No, but then, you know, on a lighter note, uh, at this moment when uh, people are 
uh, gunning for the World Health Organization. I mean, they're not really popular uh, as far as their, uh, you know, their alignment or or whatever they did with China. I'm not going to get into that. You don't have to answer that also. Uh, my next question is, <laughs> my next question is, uh, you know, and, and this I have asked a lot of doctors, a lot of scientists, and let me ask you also, Dr. Horton. It is said that wherever in countries where there is a BCG vaccine, the, the cases of coronavirus are less. Now, India is one such country. Now, should I as an Indian be hopeful or is this just hope? pegged on a hypothesis? Well, you know, right now we've got a whole bunch of hypotheses that are going around. You've mentioned one around BCG. The other one, which is now being tested in France, is that those people who smoke uh, might have a reduced risk of getting COVID-19. And so they're going to test in a clinical trial taking nic having nicotine patches to see if nicotine could be a preventive treatment for COVID-19. So right now we've got a whole bunch of ideas uh, which are very interesting, but to be completely honest, they have no solid evidence behind them. Absolutely. So uh, very good, very interesting, but we shouldn't be doing anything based on those ideas at the moment. There's a lot of research that needs to be done, just like with hydroxychloroquine, not, not one piece of evidence to support hydroxychloroquine having any beneficial effect for COVID-19. All of these ideas need to be tested in clinical trials. All right, Dr. Dr. Orton, before I let you go, uh, perhaps in a yes or no, or maybe you can elaborate. Do we really know a lot about uh, the coronavirus? I mean, for instance, you have a situation where people are not aware whether uh, you should be in quarantine for 14 days, 18 days, 20 days. There are people who have been in quarantine and then have tested positive. How much do we know about this virus? I'll give you one word answer. No, we don't <laughs> know enough. Um, we didn't even know this virus existed until three months ago. And although the global research community has done an incredible job of learning so much in that three months, there is so much we do not know. So I agree with you. I think that we are, we are trying to do our best amidst the huge uncertainty uh, and that uncertainty is causing us one of the greatest, most terrible, dangerous moments in the history of humanity. And it's a very dangerous time that we're living in, a very dangerous time. And we have to apply science in the best possible way we can to solve these threats, to literally these threats to our very species. Dr. Richard Horton, thank you so much for speaking. It was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, that's all the time we have in uh, this edition of Trending, Trending Tonight. Tonight. News. News continues right here on NDTV.